Hello, everyone. Welcome in. So excited to have you here for Cricut Design Space Orientation. This class will give you an overview of design space and we will actually make a project. So the structure of the class, I have the Q&A on. So if you have a direct question that's relevant to the class, please drop it in the Q&A and I will try and answer that live as we go along. If you have any technical difficulties with Zoom, please DM Felicia and she can help you with those. Also, just to let you know that the class is being recorded and a recorded version of the class will be available to you about 48 hours after the presentation. Um, so sit back for this first part. I will go through some slides and really just give you sort of that upper tall view of what design space is all about. And then we will dive into design space um, We'll dive into Design Space Live, where I welcome you to craft along with me, and then I will go into um, actually assembling the project. So the first part, just sit back and take notes. I'll give you a lot of information, and um, hopefully you can absorb it all in, and then we get to apply it. So why don't I go ahead and start with my uh, slides here, and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are. Oops, am I sharing the right? Yes, okay, I just wanna make sure I was sharing the right thing. Okay, so in this class um, with Cricut, this is an orientation class on design space and everything you need to know. So the first part is to meet the family. Cricut offers three different groups of machines. The Cricut Joy, which is our smallest machine at a four and a half inch cutting length. And then we have the Explore Air, which is probably our most popular machine at 11 and a half inches wide. And then the Cricut Maker, which is really the pro level machine that allows you to cut over 300 different types of materials. So these are the three different groups of machines. If you'd like to learn more about the machines, I invite you to check out learn.cricket.com so you can get more information on the specific machines. And it's a great resource for Cricut information in general. Now, to work with your machine, you want to use the Cricut software called Design Space. Design Space will work with any type of device, be it a desktop or a laptop, a tablet device or a phone device. And it really doesn't matter which device you're working with, you'll want to set up a Cricut ID. Your Cricut ID is a unique ID that is exclusive to you and it sets up your account with Cricut. With a Cricut ID, you can use Design Space over any type of, of device you'd like to, again, laptop, desktop, phone, or tablet device. And it works with all of your diff, all the different Cricut machines. So whether you're on a Cricut Joy or a Maker, you want to have your Cricut ID. Now, along with your Cricut ID is also Cricut Access. Cricut Access is the I guess the creative side of design space. So design space is the actual software that you use to design and build your creations. Cricut Access is a complete library of over 100,000 different images, 500 different fonts, and thousands of projects that make creating super easy for you. So there's three different levels of Cricut Access. There's the free level. So you have your design space and you have a free level of Cricut Access, which gives you um, about a thousand different images that are at no charge, um, some fonts to work with, and um, you can purchase images a la carte. So if you're not a frequent crafter, if you use your machine like once or twice a month for specific projects, maybe the free um, Cricut Access will work out great for you. If you're using your Cricut machine a lot more and you want to have a lot of projects and images at your fingertips, then you might want to consider the standard or premium access. Both of those access, um, both of those Cricut Access 
gives you access to over 100,000 different images. I think it's at 200,000 now, as well as all the fonts um, and the uh, projects that are available. And then there's different discounts on, on each level on your materials and um, purchasing um, license content. So that's Cricut Access. So all together, you have your machine, you have design space, and then you have Cricut Access image library. Now, no matter which device you're using, which machine you're using, you're going to want to learn how to use design space. When I go into design space on a desktop or a laptop, I go into the home screen. This is my landing page. So if you're on a tablet device or on a phone device, it automatically takes you into the canvas. To get to the home screen, on the top right corner of your tablet device, it'll have a toggle button that says home or canvas. And you just click back and forth between the two and it'll take you to the home screen, which will look something like this without the green boxes around it. I've drawn the green boxes to help highlight the different areas on the Cricut home screen. So at the top of the Cricut home screen is the header bar. And the header bar is the same whether you're on the um, canvas or you're on the home screen. It basically lets you navigate between um, the canvas and the home screen. Now, over on the left-hand side here, these stacked lines, this takes you into your profile. And in your profile, you can do a few things. One of the things I, I use the profile for is to toggle again between the home screen and the canvas, as well as to change my settings on my canvas. So if you want to change the, um, the measurements on your canvas, you would go to settings and you also go to your profile to set up a new machine. Now below the header bar is the carousel of images. And this is, will always be changing and um, show you different projects, different products, um, and give you different ideas based on the season or new, new products that are coming out from Cricut. Below that section here is your projects. So when you create something in uh, design space on the canvas and you want to be able to go back and remake it again in the future, you would save that project and it would be here in your My Project section. Below the My Project section are the um, video playlists and these are quick snippets of videos that give you specific information regarding um, tips and tricks for beginners. So this is a great spot if you're beginning with design space and you want to, you know, just a little quick snippet of what is weeding or well, how do I work with the home screen, the, um, the videos are a great spot to do that. Now lastly, below that are, is the community inspiration. So there's two different groups of inspiration. One is inspiration that Cricut has created into projects, and the other is community. And that's where we, as the users, this is where um, your projects might show up sometime in the, in the Cricut community. So that's right here. And then below that are the Cricut inspiration projects. So that's the home screen. And when you're ready to start a project, you go up to the header bar here and you click on the new project icon. Now this will take us to our canvas in design space. And I just wanna go over the different view if you're on a tablet or phone device. If you're on a tablet device, you probably came into the, can into the canvas, switched over to the home screen using this little toggle feature up here and now you're moving back to the canvas. In the canvas on the bottom left side here is the design panel. In the middle is the action panel and the layers panel. So we'll be talking about these as we, as we navigate our way through design space. And I just wanna point out to you where those special items are. If you're on a phone device, all of your icons will be along the bottom and then your toggle between home and canvas and make will be in the upper right corner here. So now this is what your um, canvas looks like in design space if you're on a desktop or a laptop. So here we have this gray header bar and you can see it looks very similar to what we had in the home and it lets you know you're on the canvas screen. 
On the left side of your, of your canvas here is the design panel. Now, again, if you're on a tablet device, that's gonna be down here in the bottom left corner. So on the um, design panel, I sort of think about the design panel as how to put information onto your canvas to manipulate and to work with. So this is sort of where you start on this left side here in the design panel to add images and content onto your canvas. So let's just talk about a few of these different icons that are in the design panel. The first one here is the images icon. When you click on the images icon, it will take you into the Cricut Access Library to find an image that you wanna to add to your canvas. Below that is the text icon. And when you click on the text icon, the text box pops up down below. And as you add text to your canvas, it will show up on your canvas and the edit text bar also shows up and becomes active. Now, I just wanna point out to you, this, um, this edit bar above my text edit bar, you notice it's a lighter gray color. And that's because those icons and these actions are not available to me at certain points in time. So when I'm working in text, some of these icons aren't active, so they'll be grayed out. And we'll go, we'll touch on this a few times, but you may notice like sometimes you're like, well, I'm trying to align this and it's not working. It's grayed out. And it's because a line at this point doesn't work as you're entering text onto your canvas. You'll see this again and again now. Now, the next um, icon here in the design panel are the shapes. And the shapes are images, just a small collection of simple shapes that you can add to your canvas to begin building and designing with. You'll notice in the shapes section too, the score line. So if you want to add a score line to your project, you would locate that in the shapes category. Now, a few things that um, we don't really go into a lot in this class, but I do want you to be aware of, is if you wanted to upload content into Design Space, you would use this upload icon on the bottom. And if you wanted to um, explore projects on your desktop or laptop, you have this projects icon here. And something unique to desktop and laptop is the templates icon. And the templates icon I, has life-size templates of different um, if you will, blanks. So I use the templates icon if I'm making family reunion shirts and I need to make shirts from an 18 month old all the way up to extra, extra large. I can bring in the template of an extra, extra large t-shirt and size my design appropriate for the extra, extra large t-shirt and then shrink that design down to make sure it also will fit on my onesie. So those are templates and those are only available on your desktop and laptop device, a version of Design Space. Now, as we work our way around Design Space, we used this design panel here to insert onto our canvas. So we're starting on, for what I'm looking at it, we're starting on my left-hand side and then we're gonna work our way around the canvas like a clock, we're gonna start at nine o'clock and work our way around. So working our way around the top are the edit is the edit bar. So now that I have a shape on my canvas, my edit bar wakes up and it's not a dark, a light gray anymore. A lot of it is a darker gray. All the icons are kind of waking up, but you'll still notice some of the icons are grayed out like a line and a range. Those work when I have two or more shapes on my canvas. So if you only have a single shape on your canvas, a line won't be active until you add an additional shape. So when I, now that I've added that extra shape, you can see my align is now an option and I could click on that and align these shapes either to the left, to the top, to the center, however I wanted to align them to each other. So that's, the, that's some of the features in the edit bar here. Now moving, still continuing that clockwise motion from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock our edit bar over on this right side here is the layers panel. And as you add layers to your canvas, whether it's a text 
an image or um, a shape, they're going to start stacking up in the layers panel here. So as I added the square and then the circle, the circle came on top of the square. Your newest layer will always show up on the top. Sometimes it even hides the layers below if it's a big image. So this is your layers panel. Now, if you're on a tablet device, your layers panel is gonna be in the middle and you just look for the icon that says layers. Down at the bottom of your layers panel are your action icons. And the action icons are actions that you can do to the layers that manipulate and change them. So we have slice, weld, attach, flatten, and contour are a few of the action icons that are on the bottom. We won't go over those in this class, but we do have a class specifically for these icons called Actions in Design Space. And that is on the um, Michael's website in the new classes and events section. So definitely recommend after this class, that's the next class you're gonna wanna take. Now, the last part of your canvas, if you're on a desktop or laptop, is the Zoom um, icon here. And it can be a little difficult to locate because it's a very light gray shade, but it's in that bottom left corner. And what it does is it allows you to enlarge your canvas or reduce your canvas without changing the size of your image or your shape or your icon. So you can use this to zoom in and out if you want to get, get more detailed line look or something like that. The um, on a tablet or phone device, you would just use your fingers and enlarge or reduce the sides of it. So that is the overview of design space. And we're just going to do a quick review. So if you have your pencil or pen and you want to jot these down or call them out with me, please feel free. At the end, when we go through it all, I'll leave it on my screen for an extra minute so you can take a picture of it and um, have that as a reference for yourself down the line. So the left side here is the design panel. This is where you start on your canvas to add information and add images, text, and icons to get started. I say icons, I mean shapes. <laughs> and then you have at the top, you have your header bar. That's your header bar. Below the header bar is this next bar here, and that is relevant to our shapes, which is the edit bar right there. Now, as we work our way across, we have the layers panel that's over here. So your layers panel is right here. And then on the bottom of your layers panel is your action icons. And then the last thing on your canvas is the zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for a minute. So everyone can either jot it down, take a note of it, take a screenshot of it, whatever works for you to remember. But this is basically something that you may wanna just kind of put up by your computer so you can reference it. And Therese, Tess is asking, what was the name of the class we should take? Tess, the next class that I suggest you take is called um, Actions in Design Space. And we go over all the different actions, slice, weld, attach, flatten, and contour in that class to kind of give you a deeper knowledge of design space and working with design space. So don't forget, if you guys do have a question as, as we're moving through, I know this is sort of the time to absorb it all. If you do have a question, feel free to type that into Q&A and, and I can get my eye on that for you. Okay. So moving along, let's dig a little bit deeper in that design panel and what those, looking at the images and how to work with images on your canvas. When you click on that images icon, it takes you into um, Cricut Access Library. So it takes you into a screen that either looks like this or a screen that has all of uh, a bunch of images on it. When you look into the all images, you can check out some highlighted categories. Now, the highlighted categories, I do have to say, I get distracted like I do on Pinterest on the recently added or the featured because it's always fun to see what is new and trending um, on design space. So that's what the highlighted categories is. It'll tell you 
kind of like these are new images that we've added or this is what people this is what's trending this is what other people are using you can also search for images using these different breakdowns of categories like shapes or themes by animal or event and then lastly you can use the uh, search bar up here using keywords to search for an image so for example on the project I'm going to show you, I was working on, it was a mug and I just wanted like a love you heart. So I typed in the keywords, love you heart, and I got a lot of different results. So I can use the filters over here on the left side of your screen to narrow down those results a little bit more because the idea of scrolling through even a thousand images to find the right one was a little bit overwhelming. So I wanted to narrow my search down and find just the right image. So to do that, you can just use some of the um, filters over here on the left side. And I'm just gonna walk through some of those to help you understand how to work with them. So the operation type refers to the type of line you're going to be asking your machine your, the, to do? What's the operation you're asking your machine to do? Like, are you asking your machine just to cut a design? Did you want to draw and then cut? Were you planning to do a print then cut? So you can narrow it down by how you want to cut on your machine. Then you can narrow it down between image complexity and layers. So image complexity refers to how many cuts are you making in that design? So if you were cutting out a lot, uh, if it was like a mandala, that would be a pretty complex image, but it might only be three layers or it might only be one layer. So if like, if you're doing a filigree design, that's a lot of cutting, but it's only one layer. So that's where your layers, are you cutting a single layer or are you cutting a multiple layer? And then below that, you can also narrow down your search by what type of material you're using. Some designs are specific to paper. Let's say if you're making a, if you want to make a 3D gingerbread house, that may be something that you're only going to make out of pipe paper. You wouldn't iron on a 3D gingerbread house. So you could narrow it down by the material you're looking for. Now, when you've narrowed down your choices and you find an image that you like, Sorry, I have a question. Carol's asking, would you use images to find a pattern for a lip balm holder? You could use images to find a pattern for lip balm holder, or you could look for a project. I'd probably look for a project for the um, lip balm holder. So that's, that's how I would do it. Um, so it, once you've selected the image you wanna work with though, you will notice you can, when you click on it, you add this green box around the image. Now, some other features around the images is this little flag with the A. That lets you know it's part of Cricut Access. And if you're a Cricut Access member, it will um, say subscribe down here, or like, for example, when I was looking for this one, this happened to be a free image that week. So it was free for me during that week. Um, but it would say subscribe down here. And if you weren't an access member, it would have a dollar sign down here that you could just purchase that one image a la carte. Now, once you've purchased an image, that is your image to use in design space. Cricut does have an angel policy. So I highly recommend you check that out on the website. Um, that basically lets you know how you can use that design, how you can use that image. Um, and if you, yes, yeah, so that's the a la carte. And if you are a Cricut Access member and you use an image, you can go back and use that image as much as you want, as long as you have your Cricut Access is up to date. Now, beyond that, we have this little um, information, the little eye um, circle down here. And what that does is it tells you the image name, the image number, and gives you a peek into image sets. So if you are, um, wanting to share an image and say, hey, I made this project using this image, you would give the name of the image or the number. When you share the number or for yourself, if you just jot it down, you always want to remember to add that hashtag. If you do a search for an image number without the hashtag, 
you won't find that image number. So you wanna find the image number there. And then the image sets, basically the image sets takes you to another screen that shows you all different images that coordinate back with the original image. So if you're working on a project, maybe you wanna make four or five different things, bridesmaids, gifts, or something like that, and you want to have like a series of images that coordinate with each other, you could look at the image sets, or maybe you're looking at an image and it's for Halloween, but you wanna use kind of a similar image for Christmas. So you could look at the image set and see if they have something that is similar. And then to go back, you just click on the back to image. And we're right back with our image. We still have that green box around it. And down here it's queued up, so it's ready to go in my canvas. And so I just pop that insert, insert that image onto my canvas. And now I'm back at my canvas. And on my canvas, I can um, see that I've got it selected because I have my quick edit icons around the corners. So this one is the delete. I can take it off my canvas. I don't want that one. This allows me to rotate the image and move it. This allows me to resize the image. And if I have my um, lock on for my proportion, when I resize this image, if I resize it by width, the height also resizes. If I want to make this heart wider but not taller, then I would turn off my proportion lock and I could just extend the image by the width or extend the image by the height. And then when you're ready to make it, you click the make it button on the top right of your header bar and it takes you to your prepare your mats. And you can see on the left side here, that it tell, gives you the information about how you're gonna cut it. You're cutting it on a mat, you're cutting it with a 12 by 12 piece of material and your image is not mirrored. Now, just because it says I'm cutting it on a 12 by 12 piece of material, my image is you know, three and a half by three and a half. So I could cut it on a piece of material that was three and a half by three and a half or four by four on that space there. And then you just, go to the next screen, which is um, send fi the final step before sending it to your machine. And you choose which machine you're sending it to. And then you choose the material that you're using. If you're on an Explore Air, you can adjust your dial and select your material that way. Or you can browse all materials and select your material here. And then once you've done that, once you've selected your material, your machine will tell you it's ready to cut and it will go ahead and cut for you. All right, so that is the overview of Design Space. Now I'm sure that percolated a couple of questions, so please do feel free to pop those in the Q&A for me. And while that is working, I'm just gonna make sure I have Design Space open um, and we are ready to go over there. Um, so go ahead, I invite everyone while we're kind of working through that, please do open up your design space. Give it a minute to, to open up. Um, if your design space is new, not new, but if you haven't opened it in a couple of days, it may have an update. So you just may have to give it a minute to give it the update. So I wanna give everyone a second to kind of catch up with us here. So Linda, if material is smaller, do you need to change the size? I don't change the size um, on, my, on my cutting mat. Um, on that screen, I just put a smaller piece on the mat because it's not it's not working with the rest of that 12 by 12 piece. So I'll just put a little four by four piece on my mat and cut that piece. So good question, Brenda. The granted, I get this a lot. I use a Cricut, um, I, I have a Cricut account as, as a Cricut member so that it says granted that as an employee of Cricut, I can use certain images they allow me to use. So it will say granted. So for, but when I use my regular account, it'll say subscribed or it'll have a price on it underneath the, the images. So I do get that question because as a user, as a regular user, you won't see that. And last question before we move into design space, Courtney says, if you were to create an image in design space, can it be saved and used in Canva or Photoshop or only in design space? So images can only be used in design space. If you use a Cricut Access image, it can only be used in design space. 
However, if you design an image outside of design space and Procreate or Canva, I don't think Canva allows you to design images, but let's say Procreate or Photoshop or something like that. If you design an image outside of design space, then you can, um, then, then you can import and upload that image into design space and, and do it that way. Okay. Felicia, I'm not sure if you have me on speaker view or not. Let me just check that out. But regardless, we're going to go. <laughs> okay, now you can see me really big. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen again and we'll go into design space and open that up live. So let me go ahead. Here we go. My design space. I'm going to share that. And we're still getting questions. So this is awesome. Please keep those questions coming. Um, and I will do my very best. I've got Felicia also helping me a little bit on the back side. So Carrie's saying, can we use the images in creative cards and from the community? Are these images that we pay for? So Carrie, if you have um, if you have Cricut access and you go into the community, let's say, like I know I have some images. If you go into these from the community. If you have Cricut access, you will be able, and they're Cricut access images, you'll be able to use this image and just do make it and make it that way. So this one uses a circle and a mandala B. So if you have Cricut access, you can just make it. If you don't have Cricut access, there would just be like a $1.99 fee or whatever the cost is to purchase that image at the end before you cut it is when you when it asks you to purchase that image. Okay, Rosie, don't worry if you haven't downloaded a design space. I'm sure you're not the only one here who hasn't gotten that far. Just sit back and watch it and, and absorb it. It is being recorded. So you can go back later and rewatch it when you download a design space and work along with me. You can even pause me and and um, and and work at your own pace. So that's what I always think. Like if, if I go a little bit too fast, just kind of take it. If I go faster than you're comfortable with, you can just always remember, you can go back and watch it again and pause it, but it's fun to, and, and helpful to watch it through the whole way today. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go into design space. Please keep asking questions and I'll get to those as I can. Um, what we're going to do, so I'm in my homepage of design space. And again, I'm working on my desktop. So I have, um, you have the carousel up here. I have my projects, the videos, and some inspirational projects down here. We're going to start with a fresh canvas. So on your header bar, go ahead and click on new project. Now, sometimes you'll notice there's multiple ways to do the same thing. So there's two different ways to start up a new project. Um, so I'm going to just show you one way, but know sometimes there's two ways to do something. Okay, so here we are on a fresh canvas, ready to start. Why don't we, um, now what we're gonna do first is we're gonna grab an image and then we're gonna have to resize that image so it will fit on your blank. So why don't we go ahead and find an image first? So we're gonna click on to the images icon and we'll go into, let's check out, here's the big screen that you show, that I showed you in my slideshow first. And we can um, search for this image that we wanna work with. So Cheryl's asking, where are images once you downloaded and paid for them? So the way that Cricut Access works and Design Space works, it's cloud-based. So when you create a project on, let's say your de desktop or laptop, you're gonna save it up to the cloud. Then it saves with your Cricut Access ID. When you go to a different device or you come back and open um, Design Space again, that project is saved up in the cloud. So when you purchase an image, Cricut Access remembers, okay, she's already purchased that B image so she can use that image anytime she comes in to Cricut Access. So let's go ahead and let's check out the images that are free this week. So you can see there are a lot of different images that are free this week. And I can never tell how long an image is going to stay in free this week 
or um, when, when they refresh it. So it just kind of varies. We're gonna look for an image today called Dream Big. So in the um, keyword search up here, type in Dream Big with me and you'll get a few options that pop up here. So you have Dream a Little Bigger Darling, Explore Dream Discover, Believe in Your Dreams, Today, we're gonna to work with Dream Big. So this should be a free image for everybody. And you just go ahead and click on that image and you'll see that you have the green box around your image. And we're going to go to um, down at the bottom. You'll see it's in your queue down here and add that to your canvas. Deb, I'll answer that question when we get there. Teresa is saying, why don't my purchased images print? And that's a good question, Teresa. Well, we'll answer that one too. So let's bring in this dream big image. And you can see that the, the in your layers panel over here, this image is all one layer. So it will all print, to, it will all cut together. Now, if you wanted to change the color of this to say purple, you would go up to your edit bar and right next to where it says operation, that black square, when you click that as a drop down menu, you can change the color of your layer. Now I can cut this in purple. When you do the, um, the next step is to make sure we have it sized appropriately. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And I'm using this coffee tumbler, called a coffee tumbler. It's an Art Minds tumbler. And it does say it's hand wash only. It is not a machine washable. I'll be using a permanent vinyl, which could go through the machine, through the dishwasher, but this mug itself is the tumbler is a hand wash tumbler. So to get the size for my finished project here, I'm gonna measure between my thumb and my finger to know how the biggest width I wanna make that image. So my measurement is four and a half inches. And the reason I hold it there is I sort of feel like if I'm holding this shape, um, you know, if I'm holding the mug, however I'm holding it, I usually kind of hold it like this. Um, I want people to see my vinyl design on the, on the tumbler itself. So I measure between my thumb and my finger. If you don't have a blank to work on today, don't worry about it because you can always just make it with me and then tuck it aside and, and put it on something later down the line. So now I'm gonna go back into design space and we will show us, we'll keep working on this image here. Now you can see when, I'm, when I have this image not selected, you don't see those four quick edit icons on the sides here. When I select the image, you can see I have my icons here. And this image comes in at 4.429. I'm gonna show you a trick. On your image, go to the layers panel. And if you left click on your tablet device, I mean, on your desktop, if you left click and go to image info, it will actually give you the image number and then you can click on that and go back to it. So if anybody is having trouble finding the image, in the search, uh, in your keyword search, you can type in hashtag, remember you always gotta do that hashtag, hashtag M2795, let's see, oops. Let me get that image information here. M2792502. And I can even go back in and look at all the different images that coordinate with that one image here. So let's just go here and I'm gonna grab that. I'll drop that in the chat for everybody. Oh, thanks Felicia. <laughs> she already beat me to it. There we go. And that'll help anybody who's having a hard time finding it. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to my canvas. All right. So here we have it. Now you'll also notice that since I changed the color of my image, um, it also changed in my layers panel over here. 
Now I've got it sized and you know, I'm actually gonna make it just a, maybe a smidge smaller for um, my mug. So I'm gonna make it four inches wide, which also changes the height to 3.613. So once you have it sized, the right size you want it sized, all you would have to do is click the make it button and it takes us to our prepare screen here. Here. Now, because I'm using, I have an Explore 3 machine selected, it asks me, do I want to cut with a mat or without a mat? If I were using smart material, I would cut without a mat, but I'm using um, regular vinyl, so I will cut on a mat. So I select on a mat. And Deb, yes, you can leave the, um, your machine on custom setting and then select your materials from the next screen we're gonna to go to. So this is, I've got my um, design on my mat. I will probably trim a piece of vinyl about five by five to put on my mat. And again, even though it says the material size is 12 by 12, if you change the material size, you'll see it, it shows how the material will show up on your mat like that. But you, I, don't, I don't usually change my material size. I usually keep it at 12 by 12 and I just know in my head, I'm actually gonna use a smaller piece of material. Now we'll be using vinyl since we're, for me today, I'm using vinyl since I'll be working on a tumbler. If you wanted to put this as an iron-on, you would want to, if you were cutting it out of iron-on vinyl, you would want to mirror your image and that you can do right here and you just mirror the image and it, it'll flip it for you so you can cut it out of iron-on vinyl. I'm just using regular vinyl though today. All right, now we just go ahead and continue and it'll take us to the next screen. And here's where you can select your material. So we'll browse all material types to, to find the right material you're using. So you can search all materials, putting in a keyword. I'll be using um, vinyl, so I type in vinyl and all these different vinyls options show up. I'll be using um, the permanent glossy vinyl. And you see over here how it's got this gold star next to that type of vinyl and the other one has a grayed out star. If this is a material you use frequently, go ahead and click on that star and turn it gold. And what will happen is this will show up on your, um, right up here on your, in your, material types. So the materials you use often, you can have them as quick options here. Now, once I've got that selected, I do tend to use the default settings that Design Space has created because um, they've tested these materials hundreds and thousands of times. So they know the right pressure and everything to put on the material to send it over. And then it tells me to hang, hang in my, um, my fine point blade and I'm ready to cut. So let's see, um, before I cut, I just am gonna answer a couple of these questions. Karen says, would this be able to complete this job using my Cricut Joy? Absolutely, Kareen, sorry. You can definitely use this on your Cricut Joy. Just remember that the width of your Cricut Joy is four and a half inches. So as long as it was four and a half inches, and you had your Cricut Joy as your machine selected, you could absolutely cut this out on Cricut Joy and use smart materials if you wanted to. So when you mirror an image, to answer um, Rosie's question, when you mirror an image, it flips the image over. So you can see now it's mirrored. You would do that if you're using a heat application. So if you're using an iron-on vinyl or you're using infusible ink, you have to mirror it because you actually cut it out of the backside and then you flip it over and you want the, the reverse of your image to cut so that when you apply it, the right side actually applies. So you, you mirror when you heat, just keep that in mind. And I can promise you, you will, I've done it. I think everybody who, who uses any kind of crafting machine, we make the mistake, you'll cut it out and then you go, oh, I forgot to mirror it. So you, you, it will happen and you'll do it a couple of times and then you'll remember, okay, I don't need to do it. So I have my premium vinyl here selected. Now, somebody else was asking, 
what do they do if their vinyl, if their material type doesn't show up? So what I would do then is I would find a material type that was similar to the material I had. And so I would choose that material and then I would do a test cut. So maybe it's just a circle, a little circle to make sure that that is the right material selection. If it didn't quite cut it through, you could add a little bit more pressure to it or you could, if it cuts too much through, you can um, reduce the pressure. And you would do that, let me show you where you do that, right here where it says default pressure, you can add more pressure or take less pressure. And I'll show you one more trick when we go to cut how to, how to take care of that. Okay, so I've got, I'm flashing here and I'm ready to go. So let me stop sharing here and I will flip my camera for you guys to my uh, overhead. And all right. So just to give you sort of an overview of different types of vinyl, um, there's Cricut has premium vinyl, permanent premium vinyl and removable vinyl, and then different types of vinyl. So like this one here is a glitter vinyl and I'm using the glitter vinyl. Let me just get my camera. Um, I'm, you, you can use the glitter vinyl. Um, as a permanent vinyl, and it, um, you want to make sure that you use the right type of transfer tape. So transfer tape is a clear tape that helps you remove your cut image from its backing onto your blank. This permanent glitter has a texture to it, so you need to use a strong grip um, type of adhesive uh, type of transfer tape to move that. If you're using removable vinyl or regular vinyl, you don't need to use any special, um, just the standard transfer tape will work and that will be fine. So let me just set that aside. And so I'll be using, this is a good variety pack. It gives you a couple different colors of um, vinyl to work with. So I've already got one piece cut down. So I can just put that on my mat. So remember my image was about a five by five image. Now I have removed my clear plastic piece to show my the sticky side of it. So I've, I've already taken that off, but I keep it handy. Like if you notice, I tucked it underneath my machine. So I keep it handy when I'm done cutting, I can put that back on. I'll be using the standard grip mat, but you could also use the light grip mat with um, vinyl. The blue light grip mat, I mostly use though when I'm working with paper. Um, I find that, that, that's, that that's a good, that's when I use that type of mat. Now, once your play light is flashing, you go ahead and click that and it'll start to cut it. Um, so look, Lakeisha is asking, do the blades ever need to be replaced? Yes, your blades can get dull over time, um, depending on what you're cutting, how often you're cutting, how you, how you use them. What I do, this is the fine point blade. That's what this looks like. And what I do um, before, before cutting, and if I find like it's dragging or something like that, if you push at the end, it pushes up your blade. So I'll sort of like give it a blowout um, and just see if there's any little debris that it's just so minor, I can't see it, but it might not be cutting as well as I like it to. And then you can, if you need to replace the blade, you just push it out, put that little plastic on it and pull it off and then put the new blade in. So you, you, you might need to do that. So Linda's asking, where do you search for an image on a tablet? Linda, you should just be able to go to the image um, icon. Oh, shoot. I forgot to show you. You should just be able to go to the image icon and um, on, on the bottom left corner and search for the image. Um, you should be able to go to free this week under category uh, at the top right corner should say category and you should be able to go to your category and um and cut from and and find that from there and i took this out i unloaded it too fast so i'm going to just cut another piece and show you guys 
some tricks while we're while I'm weeding. We can do two things at once, right? So let me put in another. I'm gonna cut myself another little piece of vinyl here. I just need a little six by six piece. I just love these colors too in this packet. Very, very fun. And it's great too, because you can use colors like for this design, this green bag, you could change up your mug and have colors that are for each season. All right, so I'm gonna put that back on there. Now you'll notice I'm gonna cut this again and I don't need to go back to design space. My light is flashing to load. I'm just gonna load that back in and it's gonna cut it again. And then I'm gonna show you a trick if, if you're worried about it, um, if you're worried about it not cutting. And so while I'm weeding and that's cutting, Carol's asking if you wanted to create a large number of these designs, could you then replicate the pattern as you would fit on a 12 by 12 sheet? Absolutely, you can just run this you know, five or six times across, however many you can fit on your mat. You would, you can definitely cut this out a lot of times. And if you're using smart material, so one of the benefits of using smart material is that you're not limited to a mat size. You can cut your smart material um, much longer, nine feet in length over your um over your mat size so you can if you're cutting with smart materials you can make you know nine feet of them okay so now to um to to weed out the vinyl i'm going to use my weeding tool and i just pick a corner of my space up like this and i just start to walk it off of my um backing here and i pull it nice and gently I would normally have this down on my table, but I think I'm gonna I run into problems. Oops, it's gonna kick out on me. <laughs> Let's just walk it like this. And always make sure like if, you're, if you've got a letter with a, a dot on it or something that you get that piece on there. Now, for anybody who's asking about, you know, maybe you're using a different type of vinyl that you've never used before. You didn't do your test cut. I can see on here, I don't know if you guys can see it on my camera. I can see my cut lines. So I know 100% that this cut. I could also take my weeding tool and cut and pull a piece on the inside of a letter and make sure it cut that way. If it didn't cut before you unload, you just hit the play button again and it will pull your, your um, mat back in and it will cut exactly along the same lines. So that's another way, like if you're using material, you weren't sure of your settings or something like that, you can you can adjust it that try it again that way. Teresa's saying when I choose continue, it asks me to select an accessory. Cricut Air Two pops up. I select it, but then it just goes back to same screen that has me choose continue again. All right, Teresa, are you hard? If you're hardwired in, you should be able to. It should find that machine for you. If you're not hardwired in and you're using Bluetooth just check your Bluetooth settings and make sure you're connected through Bluetooth with that machine. And if it continues to happen, I see you said it continues to happen, double check your Bluetooth settings. And then um, if it continues to happen, you may have to call Cricut support. Okay, so I'm just gonna tuck that under there while I finish weeding this out. So there we go. Now I'm all weeded out. I got all my little pieces in there. Um, and then I'm just gonna take my um, transferred paper and pull, cut a piece of transfer tape that will fit over my design. So again, I'm probably gonna do like a six by six inch. And <laughs> the great thing I love about the Cricut vinyl is the grid on the back of it to do your measurements. So if you don't have a handy paper trimmer, you can just count your, um, each of these as half an inch. So you can count these over and get your measurements and get yourself a nice straight line. I'm all about the straight lines <laughs> when I'm doing this. So Michael's asking, do the various materials indicate the recommended transfer tape? Um, it, it does, I think on the packaging, it will tell you to use a strong grip transfer tape with it. Let me look at my, that, that pink vinyl here. Um, should tell you, and some of the packaging like this one, I know comes with 
a piece of strong grip transfer tape in it. And in the, I know the smart materials also come with the strong grip transfer tape in it. Um, but my rule of thumb is if it's got a texture to it, Michael, I will, um, I'll use a strong grip transfer tape. And if you use strong grip transfer tape on something like this um, vinyl, you will have a hard time getting the transfer tape off of the design on your blank is, is what will happen there. So M Hardy's asking, what is smart material? So smart material is material that allows you to cut out your designs without using a mat. Um, it works with the Cricut Maker 3 and the Explore 3 and the Cricut Joy. And it just is, it's a matless type of vinyl is really what it is. Okay, so now when I've got my um, design is weeded out, I line it up on my grid here. This is a self-healing mat. Um, and I use the grid lines to line up my design. And then I use the grid lines on the transfer tape to line up along that design as well. So if you're a beginner, you may just wanna like pull that one aside and just line up your transfer tape. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but I've got a line, the gray line on my transfer tape is lined up with the white line on my mat. And I'm gonna do the hinge method. So I hinge my transfer tape up. I align my, my paper with the straight edges. And then I just bring my transfer tape down over that. I have a little bit bigger piece of transfer tape than I really need. And then I just use a wedge and I, and I burnish that design onto the transfer tape like so. So Connie, I'm not using a pen today. We're just cutting out the design. If I were to use a pen, that would go in clamp A and your design would tell you um, on your make screen to make sure you have a pen in clamp A and say your fine point in clamp B. Now I will remove my transfer, the backing of my vinyl off of my transfer tape. And again, you wanna kind of go slow and make sure every little piece stays um, the, the little eye, the dot in this one sometimes might not come off, but here we go. So I rolled that off. Now that one came off really easy. If you ever have a hard time getting your transfer tape off of your design, what I like to do is I call it the rock and roll method. I rock it and roll it. So I roll my paper and I kind of rock the vinyl, the the wedge against the vinyl, pulling it backwards like this. So it sort of is like a rock and roll, like that. Now I like to put, um, Carly, you can purchase the cutters at Michael's. Michael's carries all of the Cricut Maker, the Cricut Explore, both the Threes and the Cricut Joy. They also have all the vinyl and all of your, um, tools that you'll need, you know, weeding tool and all that kind of stuff. So these are my little face cloths and I use them to hold my tumbler in place and I've cleaned off my tumbler already. So it's, it's cleaned off, it's ready to go. And I take my, um, my image on my vinyl. Now I can use the straight edge here or the lines on the vinyl to keep my image lined up on my tumbler here. So if I go right along the top here, let's say I want it to go high and I just put that there and then I do a taco. So I hold it like a taco, like I've created a taco shell kind of here and I put the one side down and I just work my finger along the design to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. And as a beginner, sometimes I'll tell you, it, it's, it's nice to have an extra pair of hands to do this. Um, so that it doesn't, it doesn't wrinkle on you and you don't get any air bubbles. So sometimes it's nice to say to somebody, hey, can you come help me and be an extra pair of hands? If you have too much vinyl, like I have a lot of vinyl down here. I mean, I have a lot of transfer tape down here. You can cut this transfer tape or even just slice up the transfer tape, which will help you get your design to lay down flat. So if you need to, you can if it's not going down flat for you, you can transfer that. You can open it that way and that does make it easier. Okay, so now we're just gonna slide over 
keep working the design over. And also as a beginner, I do suggest that you use, um, you use mugs that don't have too much of different um, widths from the top to the bottom because uh, it's, it's a little trickier to put your vinyl down on a mug that is lined, that go, you know, has more angled sides. So Brenda, I sometimes, I like to choose colors just to see how they work out. Um, on this design, I did do another version of this design. Brenda asked, why would you choose a color when designing when the color comes from your material? Which is right. Like, so if I were to cut this, if I were to have put four on my mat, I could have put like a piece of blue vinyl um, on one spot. And I could have put, like, I could have had like this blue, yellow, pink, and purple. And they all could have been black or they all could have been blue. And just by placing different vinyl colors on gives me the different look of the vinyl. Um, I did do a, another version of this where I used the contour and changed the colors of the rainbow to be different colors. So I changed my rainbow to be a dark turquoise and a light turquoise on my mug. So that's, that's something you'll learn how to do in our actions and design space class is how, how to use contour to create a design like this. All right, so guys, we are right on time. How about that? And I, I see a couple more questions, but um, the best, the Michael's website has a lot of videos that you can um, watch and get lots of answers to it, to your questions. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to them all. I hope you guys had a fabulous time, got something to create and learn more about your Cricut machine, how to use design space. And I look forward to helping you in the next class. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great afternoon.